Hello, so in this video, I'm going to be ranking all eight seasons of Dexter. What is Dexter? Well, it was one of the first big shows to really get a name. It came out around the time of like The Sopranos, Six Feet Under, and it was kind of like a pre-version of Breaking Bad in my opinion. Of course, that's just my opinion. I'm not telling you you have to have the same opinion, but if you agree, great. Um, before we move on, I just want to start by saying, number one, there will be spoilers. If you have not watched this whole series, if this is a series that you might be interested in, go check it out first before you start seeing where I rank them, because I'm going to be talking about spoilers as I go. Number two. This is just my personal opinion. This is just my personal ranking on how I rank them. I'm not saying you have to have the same ranking. I honestly would not expect everybody to rank it the same way I do. If you agree with my points, great, wonderful. If you don't, leave your ranking in the comment section below so other people can see what you rank it. If you want to go into a long detail and say why, I mean, feel free. No, not a problem. But let's get started. So what is Dexter about? Well, Dexter is about a Miami blood splatter analyst for the Miami Police Department. Homicide, you know, obviously. And that's his day job. He's the part of the CSI team who basically goes in, collects evidence, figures out how the crime was committed. Um, but he's also got a dark secret. He's also a serial killer. But he's not your, just your run-of-the-mill serial killer. He's sort of like the Punisher or Daredevil. You know, he goes out after criminals who've got away with murder or who haven't been caught yet. He goes after bad people. Most of the time. There's one or two times he slips up where some innocent person gets mixed in the crossfire. But it's understandable most of the time why that happens. And I think that's the only reason it doesn't tear him apart is because he knew these were necessities. But let's get started with the ranking. So, number eight. For me, number eight is season three. Now, I just want to start by saying I like all eight seasons of this show. I'm not saying because it's at the bottom I don't like it at all. No, I do like it. It's just... Somebody had to be on bottom, and sorry to say, that was season three for me. It was a little more slow-paced. Uh, I didn't care for the whole DA thing, although I liked the actor who played him. Uh, I just didn't really care for that whole angle. You know, the three brothers. I didn't care for that angle. Uh, this dude who plays the DA, who be tries to become friends with Dexter... Dexter finds out that he was playing him kind of the whole time. And the actor has played in other things. Most prominently, what I know him from would be the Star Wars franchise, where he played Senator Almondala. But yeah, I mean, with that, I mean, the whole family drama going on, I just, I really did not care for it. Moving on to number seven. And for number seven, I would have to say season six. I really like the fact that Tom Hanks' son played a killer. Because this is not the kind of role we would have ever seen Tom Hanks do. Or at least not that I know of. Tom Hanks has always done more serious movies, more dramatic movies, more comedies. But his son actually played a good 
convincing murderer or psychopath. And I like Edward James Olmos from Battlestar Galactica as well. They were good as characters, but it, it was just a lot of the background stuff going on I didn't really care for. I just wanted, I was more interested in them catching them, or Dexter catching them. The best part of this season for me, the only reason it didn't go all the way to the bottom, was due to the ending. The ending of this season, season six, was the big reveal, which I did not think was going to happen until maybe the end of season seven, knowing there were eight seasons. I thought, oh crap. Deb or somebody in his life will find out probably by the end of season 7. Nope. It happens here at the end of season 6. Which is fine. Moving on to number 6 is season 2. For me season 2 it just it was not as great as the first season was. It did have a lot of good moments, but, I mean, it just wasn't as good as Season 1. It kind of dipped a little bit, which is fine. I mean, for me, Season 3 dipped a lot more. Season 2 only dipped a little, and that's okay, because they ended up coming back strong later on. So... Basically, in this season, Dokes is hot on Dexter's trail. Uh, Rita is kind of an unlikable character in this season. Understandably, you know, but at the same time, she's really harsh on Dexter. And they kind of actually break up at one point, and he kind of ends up with this girl, Lila, played by Jamie Murray from Warehouse 13. She played H.G. Wells, and she must like playing villains, because a lot of times that's what I see her playing. Um, but yeah, she was a good addition. I was okay with her not sticking around, though. I was more than happy to see her leave the show. And I was definitely okay that Dokes died, because he was getting a little too close, a little too early. So I kind of knew he wasn't going to be sticking around long. Moving on to number five. For me, it was season one. Season one was sort of the middle of the road. You can go up from here or you can go down from here. This is what started it off. So there's a serial killer who is leaving behind cryptic messages for Dexter. Dexter is kind of not just trying to help the police catch this dude, but he's more like trying to figure it out himself, solve the case himself so he can, you know, bring this ser serial killer to his table where he wants to kill him. Uh, things really spice up when the killer basically, I won't say how, just in case somebody didn't take my warning seriously but the killer basically targets Deborah, his sister and from there it's just like oh man hurry up Dexter you know figure it out finally he does and that really got the ball rolling it really was a good strong first season there were just much better seasons after moving on to number four for me it was season seven I like the whole how Deborah came to terms kind of with who Dexter was when she found out at the end of season six that he was the Bay Harbor Butcher all this time and he assured her Basically, you know, look, this is something I have to do, something I can't stop doing, but don't worry because I only kill bad people unless somebody gets in the way. 
and there is actually evidence like something happens in this season where Deb is completely on board with Dexter doing what he does and I thought by the end of this season I'm like oh okay good so he's gonna have an ally you know but no sadly the other good thing about season 7 um, was the addition of Hannah I'm not even going to try to pronounce the actress's name I just know her mainly as Sarah from the Chuck TV series and I love that show and I might even do a ranking of that in the future but yeah I love that and I've actually heard she's also in The Handmaid's Tale I'm thinking about checking it out if I know nothing about that show so if I should check it out and you think it's really good let me know in the comments below moving on up to the top three now number three for me was season eight and I know a lot of people didn't like this but I actually did everything in this season was you know I honestly did not think that it was going to make it. I mean, when she, when Deborah found out at the end of season six, I'm like, okay, how the frack do they go from there to two more seasons? One season, okay. Two seasons, what? <laughs> um, I will say that at the end of season seven, Deborah killed LaGuardia. And she really deals with it harshly in season eight. And I understand they maybe needed that for story points and stuff. But I feel like after everything she went through in season seven, she should have been okay with it. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's really hard to say because yes, LaGuardia was good well she even wasn't that great anyways she was kind of very corrupt always you know playing people to get what she wants and she didn't care about you know who she stepped on in the way but I mean she wasn't a killer so I don't know I just feel like Deb took it way harder than she probably should have and she held it way too against Dexter. She could have just turned around and left. And let Dexter do whatever he was going to do. But nope. They needed extra drama so they put that in. And that's one of the biggest things I say for me is a negative about this season. The other big negative about season 8 for me is what probably a lot of people didn't like. Some of the endings. Um, I didn't like the fact of him riding off into the hurricane and somehow magically surviving. That made no sense. Uh, I didn't like the fact he gave up his kid and to a woman who is another serial killer. Which kind of makes no sense. I mean, yeah, I understand he loves her, but... I just, I don't know. The biggest downside of this season was probably the stuff, the end of Deb. I warned you there were going to be spoilers. Well, yeah, Deb dies. And I think they did a huge disservice to this character by, sorry, she should have gone out in a blaze of glory. We didn't need an extra little, like, you know, oh, little heart-to-heart. -heart. I mean, it. she could have died without having extra time to talk to Dexter. And we could have just still had Dexter go on a rampage or want to kill that dude who killed her. And it wouldn't have changed anything. I think by not taking her down in a blaze of glory, you know, it kind of undermines you know the character a little bit but she is definitely dead and you 
in a way you could say it was at Dexter's hand which again is something like you know I get what they were going for I just didn't really care for it like I said this isn't something else where it would have been better if she just died in a blaze of glory died in a gunfight uh, but the positives and this is what won the se this season over for me which I guess wasn't enough to win the other fans over is we have an additional character who's brought in who's this psychiatrist who knew Harry Dexter's adopted father and her and Harry set up this whole code system that Dexter's running on they set this up when he was a kid she actually created it so in a sense she ultimately created Dexter and then she has some drama going on with a kid she thought was her own kid who she thought was dead who is now coming back and targeting people that's worked with her um, I really like that aspect it, as a writer myself I like how at the end you go back to the beginning to reveal a major plot point that you know ties into the last season and that's a really good storytelling because you're bringing it around full circle but that's enough about season 8 I liked everything except for kind of the end throughout this season I kept thinking Batista has secretly been you know after the death of Dokes the death of La Guarda, both of them so sure about Dexter. I thought for sure he was secretly checking in. I kept expecting some big showdown to happen. I thought Hannah was going to die in a gunfight. And he was going to get away. And Deborah was going to be taken off to take care of... Uh, his Dexter's son but no none of that happened which I just kind of now I'm kind of wondering with the new show coming out is Hannah going to come back is she going to find Dexter or is his son going to be old enough now where he goes looking for his father since they never found his body what is it from the original show that's going to bring over besides just Dexter himself you know I feel like there needs to be something somewhere but moving on to number two and for me number two is season five I loved the addition of Lumen I I'm not a huge Julia Stiles fan, but I really like 10 Things I Hate About You. Um, yeah, uh, I like the whole mystery around, you know, Dexter finding out not just this one dude is a killer, but that there's this whole sex trafficking or sex ring going on with these five guys. And one of them seems untouchable. And only thing I really didn't care for was the fact that Lumen left at the end of the series. I really, of all of Dexter's relationships, that was the one I was most rooting for. Because I was like, maybe when uh, he finally decides to give it up maybe he goes looking for her you know I'm still kind of hoping that you know in this new show maybe he goes you know maybe he comes across her and they do rekindle that relationship at least that's what I'm hoping for and finally number one I have to agree what most people probably have is their number one season four season four just sorry to say was the strongest season of the show I mean you've been building this relationship with 
Dexter and Rita throughout the seasons and then you got this uh, mystery of the Trinity Killer which is played by John Lithgow which I'm a huge fan of um, I watch the Santa Claus movie every year and he is one of the best parts of that movie uh, I watched Third Rock from the Sun probably uh, quite a few times basically whenever I can find it on stream I'll binge watch the whole series I used to put it on in the afternoons or the evenings you know whenever I caught it on TV and I just he is so funny and even in a serious role like this it's still engaging to watch him be a serious actor I grew up with Harry and the Hendersons. I grew up with John Lithgow, okay? <laughs> Lithgow. Um, so, yeah. If you didn't know, this also had another dramatic ending for, a, you know, one of the seasons. This is probably the most dramatic when, uh, after Dexter's taking care of the Trinity Killer, he comes home, thinks that his wife is on vacation with the kids but it turns out she had to take a later flight and he calls her cell to say you know hey I'm on my way only to find out that her phone is in the house and yeah that's when he discovers her in the bathroom and he realizes that it was the trinity killer so before he got to the Trinity Killer, the Trinity Killer kind of got to him. And I don't know what else to say about that except that is season four and that's what makes it so darn good. Yeah, true. I will say throughout all eight seasons, some of the characters make the dumbest choices. Like Dexter should have killed the Trinity Killer earlier. Um, in season 8, Hannah, my god, why did she not freaking cut her hair and dye it? Or at least just dye her hair a different color. I mean, her blonde sticks out like a sore thumb. Every time, like, if she had dyed it earlier on, then it was less likely she would have been spotted. But I get why they didn't do it. They wanted to increase the drama. But, no. I definitely think that the characters throughout the entire show, characters do make bad decisions, do make bad choices. It's not perfect, but neither was Breaking Bad. They're close, just not quite there and don't get me wrong I love Breaking Bad I like Dexter a lot honestly I don't know which I like more Dexter or Breaking Bad probably Breaking Bad but they are very close and they are kind of similar in this you got one person dealing with uh, murders and in Breaking Bad, it's drugs. So, this has been my series ranking for Dexter Season 1 through 8. I don't know when I'm going to get to check out the new show. I'll probably have to buy each season as they come out. But maybe once that is all over with. I will probably do a ranking of that and maybe compare, you know, some of that to this. Or maybe I'll do a re-ranking if there's only like one or two seasons of that. We'll have to wait and see. But the actual show Dexter is done. And even though there's a new show coming out that's kind of a spin-off or a sequel, a sequel off I am kind of interested to see where they take the story moving forward so like I said early in this video 
If my ranking didn't match up with how you'd rank it, I'm sorry that you don't agree. Uh, feel free to say how you would rank it in the comments below. If you did agree, maybe consider subscribing and checking out my other videos. Also, if you subscribe, please make sure to click the notification bell so you're notified whenever a new video goes up. This has been my ranking for Dexter, and I will talk to you next time.